Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2 CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 36, and once again our diggers have dug through the arcade section of the DOS Games folder. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have a team dig from Scott Percival and Yarmo Ranta, who've dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash cauldron. So I know about the particular Sierra title, The Black Cauldron, but I don't know if this is going to be it or not. Um, Titus Log? Okay, if it, this is a Titus game, then it was definitely not The Black Cauldron. Um, oh, cauldron.exe. Let's go. Yep, it's a Titus game. 1992. Sound is a little... scratchy for some reason. Maybe I need to turn the cycles up. Super Cauldron. I don't think I've ever played this game before. And this is probably Wares, <laughs> because Titus games are commercial titles, so... Or maybe it's a demo version, I don't know, but this does not look like a demo version. So, what am I doing here? Oh, I've got a rock. A rock weapon. Is there no sound effects? Because there's the music, but... Oh, whoops. Uh, okay, the escape key is an instant quit key. <laughs> well, that's helpful. Is there a com file, a bat file? Like, how do I... So it was weird, because I didn't hear any sound effects. Oh, we got a file id.diz. Um, this might reveal if this is, um... Cortex Presents. Yeah, this is definitely Wares. So as I mentioned before, this 2000 game CD collection I have, there's a couple versions of it from what I'm aware of, and the very first release, they were so not caring of what they put on the disc that they just gleamed stuff from all kinds of BBSs, and I'm pretty sure they picked up a few from Wares BBSs, but and from what I understand, the second release of this um, software package didn't have all the wares in it. They stripped it out because of obvious reasons. You're selling this in, like, stores and everything. And yeah, the sound is a bit scratchy from the emulation. Maybe I need to turn the cycles down, not up. Okay. Broom? Why do I suddenly have a broom? Okay, so... Oh, I can fly! Interesting. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, Rube's gone. That was fun while it lasted. Oh, now I got a man. Who I can hit. Oh, interesting, the rocks go further, the... I turned him into a frog. So I'm clearly playing some kind of witch character. Who's throwing rocks. The screen is kind of janky. <laughs> I'm sure some of you guys have noticed that by now. Ow. Do I have any other keys here? Uh... Oh, there's a save key. Good to know. Uh, I just hit the O key and it ended my game instantly. And there's already a high score of AAA? Okay then. <laughs> I sure didn't put that in there. And we're already starting again? Okay. So let's just go in one direction. See what we find. We got a pumpkin. The pumpkin hurts? If I'm a witch, then why would the pumpkins be dangerous? Wouldn't things like that be, like, good for me? Hmm. Also, how are you supposed to deal with those bats that are- they just fly overhead? Yeah, that's... 
So this, ow. I'm losing health left and right. Let's just fly over everything. Now there's no sound effects. I'm willing to bet like maybe there's like some sort of I don't know. Either the sounds didn't activate properly as a result of how the game's being emulated, or it's also possible that this bur this rip of the game doesn't have sound effects. Like they maybe they missed them. Oh, the stage wraps around. So clearly there's some kind of goal that I have to hit. So here's the main issue with the game. Because this is actually extremely hard to play. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons, but first of all, let's talk about the control let's talk about the movement controls. When you approach an edge of the screen it sort of shifts it automatically so that you can see ahead of you. But what's weird about that is that then the screen stops. So the screen doesn't scroll with you, it just scrolls in sort of increments. But what's tricky about this is that the increments are always different. See, right now, the tree on the left is on the left. You got the pumpkin there. Now the pumpkin's off screen. The tree on the left isn't all the way to the left this time. Still not all the way to the left. Now it's all the way to the left. So it makes it... It's not... Okay. In a game that has scrolling screen sections like, say, Legend of Zelda... It always scrolls the same amount when you reach the edge of the screen. This is scrolling a different amount each time it reaches the edge because it's sort of trying to catch up to the character. And that makes it extremely disorienting when you're trying to have an exact position going on. Because you're just... You're fighting the screen to stay still so that you can see what you're doing. And it also makes it really hard to see where you're jumping. Because every time the screen is shifting, you can't... You lose... Your eyes just sort of lose track of everything. This is terrible. This really is. Like, I mean, the graphics are really good. Like, the graphics are colorful. The animation's decent. But I can't say the same about the programming. Oh, hang on. If I hold the spacebar down, I can charge the rock and throw it even further. Good to know. Oh, and I can crawl. I guess that would might. Whoa. You can also slide down hills, apparently. If the camera actually, like, stayed centered on the character, this would be perfectly fine. And there's no reason the game couldn't have done that. I'm not running at a super high cycles count. It's a 1992 game. It should have been more than capable of doing something like that. I think at some point, maybe I should give this game, like, a better chance just from, like, finding a legitimate copy, checking out the manual or something. But I should point out that Titus was not known for making spectacular games. In fact, most of you are probably aware that they're the ones responsible for the Nintendo 64 version of Superman. Though the irony there is a lot of the problems with Superman are more than just, um, goes beyond what Titus was doing, because Titus didn't originally have the whole ring thing in Superman 64. But... And that's the other thing, too, is Titus games, they weren't terrible, but they weren't great. So... I don't know. This game is basically feels like a Titus game, let's put it that way. And I have no idea what I'm doing, so... <laughs> and that's a weird looking monster. So I'm I'm done with this game. No idea what's happening with the sound effects. Clearly it's been ripped and that this is not a legitimate copy of this game. So if anyone has any extra info, feel free to let me know, but nah. Yeah, I'm done with this one. Next up we have DOS Games backslash arcade backslash balloons. Balloon Zed? 
Something like that. And this one's dug up by Spree. That was going to have something to do with balloons. Um, uh, we have two executable files. Um, I got a readme and we got a file ID.diz. Now, something that's interesting about file ID.diz files is they're usually used to identify a game so that when a BBS or something was like showing the game or had it listed, it would have like an immediate amount of information to pull from. But what's interesting is that if you find a file ID.diz file with something and it wasn't a shareware game, then it was almost certainly ripped from somewhere. Now, in this case, I'm going to guess that this is probably a legitimate thing. Um, Balloons by Adrian Danielli, 1993 Acumen Software. So I'm guessing Acumen is probably then just um, going to be like a logo thing. Let's actually just take a look. Acumen Software Catalog. Oh, apparently more... What? Oh, interesting transition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so right off at the bat in this um, catalog, we see that the Balloons game looks like it's going to be a Balloon Fighter ripoff, which is technically a Joust ripoff, which, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, what else have I got here? Um, Textris, so a Tetris clone. Micro's Dilemma 2. Kind of looks like Dig Dug. Micro's Dilemma, the original. Eliminate spheres found on the playing field. I have no idea what that one. VGA Tron. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be probably a Tron path clearing thing. Wow, there's actually a lot of games that this guy made. Like, they all look, they're all probably um, clones of other software, but. Anyways, let's actually look at the game itself. <laughs> Balloonza. Graphics, VGAs, from Okay. Slow white fade. Acumen. Which has a blue border, much like my episode titles for um, <laughs> ancient DOS games. What was that for coincidence? That is really hard to look at. Um, <laughs> Shareware version 1.0, please register. Got it. Puff Gunners? Play Midnight Journeys, play Puff Gunners. View current control info. Arrow keys and enter. Got it. Or, wait a minute. It says it has joystick highlighted. Hopefully it can actually... Um, Okay, there we go. Keyboard. Puff Gunner's configuration menu. Number of simultaneous balloons, balloons, or puff strength. <laughs> uh, what is, this sounds weird, because, like, I mean, there's nothing in Balloon Fight that would suggest a gun of some sort. So maybe this isn't a Balloon Fight clone, but just has graphics similar to it? I don't know. Um, look, but considering how interesting that was, let's actually do the Puff Gunners thing first. Okay, so... Interesting. So this is definitely not a Balloon Flight balloon fight clone so what apparently it, I'm trying to do this is definitely two-player only because I can't control I have control of both sides yeah apparently it uses energy to this kind of reminds me of crossfire for some odd reason for anybody who's ever played that board game I used to have that don't have it anymore sad face um let's uh, <laughs> it clips through the sprites <laughs> uh not the best sprite work but though like i mean gameplay wise this looks like it would be a pretty fun two-player game very basic but you know basic works 
I don't know if there's like a point limit or anything. Kind of sucks that there's no like one player mode for this. But I guess maybe that's what Midnight Journey is going to be for. Oh, there's a fading effect on the numbers. Whoa. <laughs> Bounces right up there. So yeah, this isn't bad. At least for a two-player game. Can't play it solo, really. Um, okay, let's see what Midnight Journeys is. It was almost like two games in one. Which, actually, Balloon Fight was like that, because it had its normal gameplay, and then it also had a sort of balloon trip mode. Oh, yeah, this is... <laughs> This is straight up balloon trip right here from Balloon Fight. <laughs> with even with the stars and you're trying to go for the balloons. Although it's a pink ocean. And if you touch it, you sink right in. You'd like to try again? Yes, please. Although we have levels here. Balloon Trip in Balloon Fight didn't have levels. It was just go for as far as you could. So here's something that's different with this game compared to Balloon Fight. Is that your inertia doesn't last forever. See how I just stopped going right there? I didn't push a, the right key. That happened automatically. So it looks like your inertia... There's actually some damping to your inertia in this game, whereas in the actual balloon fight, there's no damping. So if you start going in one direction, you keep going in that direction. So that's a bit different. I imagine that would screw me up big time if, this, if these levels got any more difficult. I'm not seeing any bubbles. In the original balloon fight, there was a bubble power-up that you could get that would, like, stop the screen for a moment. Also, in the balloon trip mode in Balloon Fight, if you got 20 balloons in a row without missing any, it would you'd get like a special tone and it would start doubling them up so that you could get double points, which is kind of cool. But if you then subsequently missed one, it would go back down to singles. Oh, and their stars are moving now. <laughs> and if it seems like I'm doing unnaturally good at this, I should mention that I, ha I don't have Balloon Fight on the NES, but I do have Balloon Kid on the Game Boy. Because that, I actually, wow, first time I played that game was like, back when I was like eight or nine years old. And I've had a copy for a long time now, so I'm actually pretty experienced with this game. Not to mention I also have, there was also a Flash version, a Flash clone that came out that was actually kind of like an expansion, sort of, of the original Balloon Fight concept, but more 1v1 in a sense. I forget what it was called. I haven't played it in, wow, so many, so many years now. But this has actually been going on for a while, so now I'm kind of curious if there's even a level 2 or if this just goes on forever or something. Do we have a level 2 yet? Come on, level 2. Yay, we actually finished a level. Oh, come on, you can count them up faster than that. What, no special bonus? <laughs> okay, so I guess as far as clones are concerned, this is pretty competent. I mean, it's a little too close to the original Balloon Fight to feel like its own individual, independent thing. Like, I mean, it is doing a few things differently, but it's so close by comparison that it feels more like a ripoff than a clone. And that's never a good thing, really. So, I think if this game did a little more to be more of its own thing, it could have been could have been really decent. But as it stands, it really does come across as a ripoff instead of a clone, so... Okay, and I will admit, it does have that two-player mode, which is unique to the game. So, it's like half clone, half ripoff, if that... <laughs> if that makes any level of sense. Which I hope it does. And let's see what happens if I touch one of these things. Oh! So, it, unlike the balloon trip mode, which just shocks you immediately, you actually do get a second hit there. Cool. So, is it going to boot me back to DOS? Nope, it brings me back to the main menu. Okay, so that was balloons. Or balloon Z, or however you want to pronounce that. It's half clone, half... Or, no, half... Half ripoff, half inspired by, in a sense. That's kind of a weird thing, but whatever. It was still interesting. 
And to finish things off, Ronnie Schmaltzers dug up a really weirdly named folder called DOS games backslash arcade two backslash quaz or hang on, those are the first six letters on the left side of the keyboard. I don't have a freaking clue what this is gonna be. Ah, uh, snakes? What does that have to do with the those keyboard characters? Um Okay, uh wait a minute. DLL? I think we may have a Windows game here. This program requires Microsoft Windows. Well, isn't that just dandy? Hang on, let me actually go into Windows. It's always so stupid when the DOS games end up in the Windows folder and vice versa. And Anyways, we got a help file here. Simple game called Snakes. Plain. You are the yellow bulldozer in the middle of the screen? Why is the game called Snakes if you're playing a bulldozer? Okay. So far, this has been weird. You move the bulldozer around the playing field by pressing the arrow keys on the keyboard. The mouse cannot be used to move the bulldozer. Mouse can only be used to pause the game and select from the menus. The gray walls are solid, cannot be moved or passed through. The blue blocks are movable and are used to kill snakes. You can push one or more blue blocks at a time. The purple snakes move randomly around the screen. Snakes can be killed by pushing blocks into them. Ten snakes at all times. Snake is killed and those created. The red power blocks will appear from time to time. If you run over one, your bulldozer becomes red for several seconds. During this time, you cannot be killed by snakes. You can run directly into snakes and kill them. When the bulldozer turns a dark shade of red, the power block time is about to run out. Uh, at least there's that. Okay, so let's see how this plays. So this game was made by Kevin Patch. In 1991. Registration fee of $15. Got it. Oh, this looks curious. Kind of makes me think of like a reverse centipede or something. Oh, jeez, the mouse cursor becomes a use keys thing when you put it over the... Even when it's... Or no, it actually... When it's over the pause button, it actually does turn into a mouse cursor again. That's kind of weird. Okay, new game. So, uh... The arrow keys don't do anything. The number pad doesn't do anything. I, how the heck do I move myself then? Okay, so I don't know what happened, but my keyboard controls are broken, but only in DOSBox. All of, I'm still in Windows 10. All of my keyboard controls are working fine in every other program, but the moment I go into DOSBox, I have no keyboard control. Okay, I'm gonna keep, ch I'm gonna test this a bit and see if it was just a glitch or if there's something with the game that I was trying to play or what. Okay, I have no idea what went wrong. I just restarted everything and the game's working fine now. So. Interesting. So the game's using PC speaker sound effects from sounds of things. It's kind of... It's not unheard of for a Windows 3.1 game, but it's certainly uncommon. This is ridiculous. They're moving so fast. I wonder if they're supposed to move that fast. So yeah, apparently the goal is to just smash the snakes. But you... And when you do so, it's kind of... Oops. Oh, come on! You respawn right where you die? That's kind of dumb. So it sort of like cuts the snake off at where you push the blue block into them. Game over. You got 325 points. And I'm not putting in a quote because I don't care. <laughs> so, huh. Let me see if turning the cycles down helps. It does not. So that is apparently the speed the game is supposed to run at. So... Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. If you hold the keyboard key down, the game just sort of races ahead. So it's actually locking your movement to each of the game frames. So yeah, slowing it down would be a terrible idea in that case. But then the game shouldn't be... really shouldn't be coded that way to begin with. Why is clear high scores the default button on the... That's kind of dumb. Uh, let me show you guys that. I'm gonna go get myself killed here. 
I guess this is the easiest way to do it, it just stays still. <laughs> Amazingly, they don't seem to have any inclination to attack, so their movements are just 100% random from the looks of it. Game over, you got zero points. Now, at first glance, you can't tell what the default button is, except you kind of can, and if I hit enter, it clear scores was the default button, and then yes is the default on the clear scores dialog. That's pretty dumb. In fact, I can't even use the arrow keys to select the OK button. It's like the clear scores button has pri too much priority. It's like it's a different thing entirely. So right off the bat, failure of the keyboard controls, just in terms of the UI, and that the reason why that's additionally stupid is because this is a game where you use the keyboard to control it. In fact, the mouse is telling you right here, use the keys. Yeah, I can't say I like this game. <laughs> like, it's an interesting idea, but it's not executed that well. Yeah, I guess all things considered, it's not a terrible game, but it does not play well. And then the failure with the UI and the keyboard with the high scores, it's like... <laughs> Uh, I, I don't like this game. I think maybe a few people out there might, but this is definitely not a game I enjoy.